How you guys doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. What's that? <laughs> no, actually I'm not. I'm a live streamer. Last year I was okay. I got one of these. Alright, cool. I think it's good until the end of the month, right? Yeah. Alright, awesome. Yeah. Then, yeah. then I need to decide what I'm gonna go up in this year. Ooh. Yeah. Go up in last? I went up in Grumpy. I, I was in the back. DC three, the beaver, uh T six would be fun. Mm, uh, the yeah. T6 would be that's awesome. We're talking yeah. loops, barrel rows. I don't know about that, though. Oh, it's a piece of cake. Well, isn't that, you, you have to wear a, on a roller coaster? I have. Okay, same thing. I have a, actually have a balance. Have I have a, a balance person. disorder, though. Oh, do you? Yeah, okay. so unfortunately, something like that. I mean, I probably just do fine, but I probably wouldn't enjoy it. Or if you go up, you can tell the pilot, I just don't Stand do anything. Uh, true. And Seven that's what they'll do, and they'll give you some stick time as well, which is kind of fun. Get out of here, really? Yeah, yeah. You know, fly straight, watch the. Oh, really? She'll tell you what to do if you get out of order. Interesting. Take over, it's no big deal. I got this thing smaller from last year because we went out last year with a right. pipe. I remember the, that. Yeah. 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 And it went off freaking. I mean, as soon as we got all like over the water towards Port Townsend, we kind of lost it. But it was live. Right. The, it was live the whole time. It was amazing. Actually, one of my uh, my cohorts, uh, Dos Valdez, is over in the UK doing that thing right now. Where you guys have the was it the DC two that's over there right now? DC three. DC three. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's been over there live streaming all that whole event too as well. Yeah, it's been, in uh, Duxford. Yeah, and then I think tomorrow it flies to Cannes. Yeah, and then I've been Thursday watching it. it. Does a whole thing with all the other uh, C forty sevens and. Yeah, they've been covering it really well. Or they were doing the formation flying, and then yeah. they're going to do the airdrop and stuff. Yeah. Tomorrow with a bunch of, uh, is it Finnish? I don't know, they're all dressed in pure yeah, I saw that. And I was like, that's freaking uh, awesome. Regular, not not the fancy new te- uh, uh, right, uh, right, right. parachutes. They're using the olive green. Right, just they do have steering ability though. Right, I, I know that. But other than that, it's pretty awesome. Awesome. That's all. Oh, I wish I could see the DC three. Well, yeah, work on it. You can shoot the postcard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys always have lists because yeah, that's what we did last year, guys. So we ended up in Grumpy. It's five hundred dollars. It was worth it. Every dollar. Yep. Yeah, that or the Texan. <laughs> yeah, that'd be incredible. The, the beaver's kind of fun, simply because when you're flying, because of the top wing and the fact that it's search and rescue. Oh right. You, you have unlimited view. View of that on the right. So you get some gorgeous pictures. Amazing. Would be Camino. There's a rock we usually buzz that usually has about thirty or forty sea lions on it. You know, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Watch yeah. them just scatter. <laughs> well, they don't really. We don't they're like, ah, oh, they're but, probably... You know, you get down to where you can see them. And that's awesome. That's kind of fun. Yeah, we had a really good time last year. I mean, over the winter, we didn't really get a whole lot, a whole lot done, but we did manage to cover all the Challenger that's stuff you guys had here last year yeah. as well, and that was, that was amazing. Yeah, that's that was, a great event. Yeah. The the next big event here, it's it's going to be uh, run by... Uh, Flying Heritage, oh, right, but it's yeah. the uh, Sky Sky Fair. Oh right, right, right. On the twentieth of July, and we'll probably be sending three or four planes over there to fly. Oh okay. And but it'll be a yeah. I think that's what we did basically did last hours. last year. Is basically we, we I thought we came here, but no, it was over there, and then we jumped on that thing, and it was just an experience of a lifetime. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. So it's supposed to you know like jumping on a jet and flying you know in San Jose or whatever. Right. It's nothing right. like it. It's right. Just, because it was it was interesting. Like last year, I still remember I'm trying to remember the pilot's name. Um, but we got over our port towns in Eagle Harbor, and the plane started getting lower and lower and lower. And he just hooked it around the harbor. And it must have been uh, like 300 feet or above the trees or whatever, mm-hmm. and just took off. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so much fun! I don't ever, I don't want to stand. It was so for so quick. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we were thinking everybody's been talking about doing doing more of that and try to get more involved with. You guys and the whole facility and everything else, because the live streaming has become really popular. Being able to have people come with you, you know, it's supposed to sure. like, kind of like everybody wants it, wants it on demand, like right now. Right. You right. know, as opposed to watching like a video that they can just watch over right. again. They can go like, pan left, pan right. Yeah. What, is, what is that? What is it? Yeah. I have a question about that. How does that work? But uh, then everybody always had this question too about these streaming rigs. Are like, does the battery pass? FAA qualifications, and then someone told me he's like, "There's not one piece of electronics in this plane, so I don't think it's going to be an issue." Yeah, yeah, no. So. All of our planes are are in a class the F uh, the FAA has. It's called experimental, right? Because okay. Because they're not being produced anymore. Right. It's like when you have a horseless carriage license plate <laughs> oh, for a gotcha. classic car. 
Right. And um, so we basically do all the maintenance on all the aircraft, fill out numerous reports, submit them to the FAA, and then they send us an annual, okay, you can fly again for another year gotcha. type certificate, a right. flight certificate. And we don't have to have FAA inspectors in here like, you know, United Airlines would have, for example. Right. So. Now, I remember seeing, what was it, last, it's probably near, near closer to the fall, whether it was you guys or the other outfit, the, I always, I apologize, the name of the, the Air Museum over there. Flying Heritage. Flying, flying Heritage and Combat MFN. Armory, so this is uh, so Armory cool. something. Hmm. It's FH Cam. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Armory uh, Museum. Okay, gotcha. Was that there that they had? It was it a, a Mr. Schmidt or something that they restored last year? And it was really quick. They they, they have had, they have an ME one oh nine. That's they have right. A Fock Wolf one ninety. They have a Russian fighter. Um, I guess it's called a Sukhoyov or something. Is that like the that. MiG twenty nine or? The MiG twenty nine is the Russian jet. That's a model. right. I always see all that. the rest of their stuff is World War Two. Okay. They're restoring. Do they uh, get flights in those? Um, well, there's only one seat. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not a two seat. They do have a B twenty five, but it's a J model towards the end oh. of the war, where ours is a D model. Right. So ours is uh, representative of the same configuration flown off the Hornet from the Doolittle raid. Theirs is the, the, the B-25 that kind of came about a year before the end of the war. Hmm. And they went from a medium bomber with minimal uh, uh, 50 caliber gun protection to, uh, eh, we're not going to bomb so much, but we're going to fill this thing up with 18 machine guns. Oh, and right, yeah. I saw like all the variations and configura two. configurations that they would eight, put eight a howitzer in it or like a... Just 18, just 50 calibers. They had eight in the nose, four strapped on the fuselage. They moved the turret forward, so that's two more. Right. They had a double 50 cal in the in the tail, and then they had two 50 cal caliber waist guns. So they had 18 guns total. I thought I heard that they had put a cannon on one of them at one time. Some Maybe was... may have been custom modified right. um, for use wherever the like tank the, the nose configuration actually was a. Um, derivative of a um, crew chief in the South Pacific that said, why are we flying this thing with one stupid gun in the nose? Let's, right. let's fill it up. And he, right. he modified the nose and put machine guns in there. And North American was sort of like, you're going to destroy the airframe because of the recoil. And, everything. and oh, it didn't imagine. hurt the airframe. And then they shipped him shipped him back to L.A. and he helped them design the J model with all the guns wow. in the nose. Yeah. yeah but it was incredible. a field modification. So it's, I mean, you know, when, you know, you do, you do what you got to do, do, just right? like even like the new boys over there with their Humvees, man, they're adding all kinds of armor protection and everything sure, just sure. to freaking stay alive. Yeah, they're not waiting it's for crazy. somebody back yeah. home to produce a new model. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. Put something on it. The ingen ingenuity is incredible when they come up with this stuff. But always, uh, everything about this just fascinates me, but <clears throat> it's hard to get around and see. Have you see been here when the Avengers been here? I don't think so. Let's take a look at that. I think you'll find it. Pretty interesting. So, um, one of our volunteer pilots, he flies the DC-3 and the B-25. His name is Michael Cock. Right. I think I just saw him on the stream over there in the UK. Pro he's mm -hmm. not over there. He's I not? Don't, I don't think unless he flew well, over like... What's the other operator. gentleman's name? Uh, it's not Donald. There's Dan or... There's Dan. I, I know one of them and there was... Do you know offhand the three pilot, the two pilots besides John that are on the DC-3? Oh, Michael. Lindover? Michael. Okay, yeah, I think okay. that's his Michael name. Because um... he flew this back Wednesday from Montana, so he flew over to meet him in Southern England. Who? Michael. Because no, he was he was here. Okay, because Michael uh, okay. was here last Wednesday in the hangar. Yeah, I was trying to remember who it was I okay. saw that was on the live stream. Okay. Okay, so they're joining the whole thing. Right. No, I know Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he owns the Avenger. Oh, he owns it? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So. I think that's it right there. DC-3 interior, it looks like. Yeah. Unless it's, nah, it might be a different one. It's got blue in it. Oh, yeah, that's not ours. That's but I remember the, uh, seeing it on there. Restored passenger. Ours is uh, restored to uh, the executive interior. Hmm. Yeah, so he's been covering that whole thing, basically. 
someone that I've kind of grown to appreciate and met a couple of times and some of the stuff he's doing. He does a lot of stuff with SpaceX and uh, Rocket oh, Launchers okay. down at Cape yeah. Canaveral. Yeah. And he actually got to sit down with the the new administrator of NASA. I mean, he's like a little media guy. He's putting together like a little team of people to do this live streaming. And so one day he got him and they sat down there for like an hour and talked. Wow. It was nuts. That's pretty cool. But he covers all like, you know, the... the He's a, he's like a total Elon f- fanboy. Some of the stuff that they're coming out with is just incredible. Yeah, so Michael uh, owns this, and he owns a fully restored T28 trainer, which was the trainer that took the place of the Texan in mm. the early 50s. And he can only fit one of them in the hangar, so he keeps the Avenger here, which is nice because we can display mm. it. Right. And he flies it a lot. He just uh, brought it back from Montana last Wednesday. But, it's incredible. Um, yeah, it's a huge mother. It's the largest. <laughs> it's the largest single propeller airplane ever built. Really? Yeah. So anything bigger than this had two engines and two planes. Yeah. She's kind of a fatty, huh? It's huge. Well, <laughs> you can look inside. Yeah. And it's crazy. This is where the radio operator sits, and it's lovingly called the vomitorium. The vomitorium, oh yeah. my gosh. So tons of, look at the room in there, and then you've got the tunnel. Right. You can get to either seat, front or rear, that way, or you can climb up on the wing. Wow. And this is a Grumman, which is the same as our Bearcat. This Here is the, um, this is the plane that George Bush Sr. was flying when he was shot down oh. in World War II. Really? Yeah, he flew Avengers. Wow. Off the carriers. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. There's your radio, guys. Yep. It's probably, well, I probably is older than me. I just turned 50 this year, so. Ah, oh, you're young. <laughs> I'm young, young. Wow. And you can see. Yeah, that. I can see why. You can, oh, wow. That, that metal plate protects the gunner from fire. But right. You, basically, if you're really small, you can sit up in there and operate the gun, the turret gun. Mm-hmm. Well, you notice how, like, uh, this day and age, a lot of the kids they get a lot taller, but like the older generation is like a lot shorter. <laughs> the the average crew of, of a bomber, for example, were 17 to 22. The mm. 22-year-old was called the old man. <laughs> it was generally the, the aircraft commander and the pilot. Wow. And the average height and weight was about 5'6 and 145. Jeez, yeah. It's all those uh, additives and stuff you started putting in food probably. Yeah. These well, days. and then the depression, nobody had yeah, a lot of cases. Yeah, true. Yeah. you had a lot, had money, I guess. But yeah, yeah. My dad uh, went to college in 36. He went mm. to, enrolled in the year in 36. And when he enrolled in college, he was 6'3 and 132 pounds. Wow, that's a big guy. And I, I, I said, Dad, why were you so skinny? He says, well, we just didn't have enough to eat when I was a kid. It was the depression. That was a while. When was it, 19... 19- 30 or night when was the great depression that was it it uh it started uh in the in the 20s in the 20s it basically didn't officially end until world war ii really huh. know, i think everybody came back from world war ii they had the gi bill and they had all right cheap home loans and all they right. just reinvigorated the economy of the country yeah. but uh, in a sense world war ii put everybody to work one way or the other yeah yeah everybody the women everybody yep yeah, God knows I've watched enough documentaries about it. It's always been fascinating. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. <clears throat> the story, I like, kind of started getting into the... I mean, I wanted to get more and more into aviation, but just more on the, like, sharing side, like, with the streaming and everything else. And just by chance, just was going to make a UE down here, down the street. I was like, you know what? I've never been there. And then it basically all happened, like, oh, well, you can go up and fly in one of these things? And now it's like just turned into this thing like we've mm-hmm. been traveling around quite a bit, like looking at a lot of the stuff that we can share at, you know, well, at least talking to like people like you and have, that have really good stories or they can, you know, help out and inform people just how all this works and how, how this, you know, becomes what it is. And like, well, with um, Paul Allen, God bless his soul, because he was a founder of this as well, wasn't he? Or is that... Our founder is John Sessions. Oh, okay. And he was uh, became an avid pilot in the 80s. Oh, okay. And then at, as his business fortunes grew, he started mm. collecting and restoring. Why does that name sound familiar? Uh, 
He's a uh, he's been an Stand attorney and now he owns Stand a I love uh, this. nationwide um, uh, construction development company. Oh, okay. So he okay, builds. He goes sense. in and builds like apartments, condos, that right? Sort of thing. Kind of like the Scott doll of the. He did a lot of <laughs> a lot of construction work when the whole South. South Dakota oil fracking oh, okay. thing took off, and they just had oh. thousands of people moving in every day. Oh, I bet. He did a lot of uh, work back there. Wow. So was he into the fracking business then? No, no, no. No. He's, he's into building apartments and condos. Oh, and so the for the people to do the... Okay. Right. So he's a good guy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> that's good. That way. Well, I don't know. I mean, everybody you need... Well, I need oil to make these things run, too, so... Yeah. Amazing. But anyway, this is uh, Michael's plane. That's cool. And he flies it a lot. It was, um, it's really popular. About, about a couple times a year, he gets a call from NES Whidbey. Oh, really? And they're having a ceremony or a uh, celebration right, of right. something or a change of command. Oh, is that all filled or? Yeah. That's uh, over on Whidbey and Oak Harbor. Yeah, all filled. Yeah. Yeah. All filled. Yeah. And he, um, he'll fly this baby over and I like, mean the pilots there we just go ape shit. They're oh just, like, I bet. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> God yeah. I mean so much history. Yeah. Yeah my mother she used to live off of uh, Blazer Avenue right at the north end of uh, Altfield and mm -hmm. they the A6 is in the every once in a while and then I think they moved the Hornets up there. Yeah. And, and just pissed her growlers, off. But it's basically yeah. yeah. But I mean well, there no her on. flight path. In yeah, fact I could really probably high. even show you. It's like ridiculously horrible. They actually ended up moving. I wonder if I have it on here somewhere. They, they uh, shoot landings over here maybe once a month. Oh, do they? So you'll hear them in the neighborhood. But uh... Yeah, I wonder if I have that. It's been like a long time ago. But, yeah, we just kind of came by today to check out some of the stuff I, haven't, I hadn't seen before. And I don't remember this being here. <laughs> no, this is the eh, last couple of years he's been keeping it here. But it's gone a lot because it is in high demand that's crazy this is a radar dome it's not working but it's similar to what you would have seen on the aircraft during the war wow this how does that operate is that a spinning device or is it just a one panel type just, of thing yeah it's just a it's just a whatever 1943 radar was huh at the time well it'd be more of a for is it a ground radar or a sh or forward yeah. shooting radar no it'd be for locating ships oh targets, okay gotcha sort of thing. So the more of an this angle thing. A, this is a typical rocket. It would have taken four per wing. Wow. And then this here is a 500-pound bomb. It takes one per wing. Wow. And these are the same bombs that would go inside of the B-25, the 500-pound. Oh, uh, okay, B right. B-25 holds eight of them. Wow. And then in here, the bomb bay, 2,000-pound torpedo. <laughs> so this this what, like 18 was, feet long? Like just okay, a huge... Go. Pretty close to that. Yeah. There's a there's a storage. Um, these planes came with a storage locker that you could put in the bomb bay to to haul stuff right. between uh, assignments, and it's in there now. But you can get a good idea of the size of the bomb bay. It's kind of a, what they what deadheading equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So basically, the torpedo would stretch from oh, like wow. here almost to the end. Jeez. And there's the transport pod. Wow. That is really cool. And then a big sucker of an engine. I think this one produces about 2,400 horsepower. Wow. Something in that vicinity. Well, what's the weight on the plane itself? Oh, I'd have to look it up. Uh, it's, it's not light, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a big boy. It's nuts. And it's funny because you look at them in pictures and it looks like just another, you know, yeah. like World War II fighter, but way bigger than a Wildcat or a Hellcat right. or certainly the Bearcat. Well, it's even like with Grumpy, a lot of people thought, you know, like, you know, they thought big. I think they mistaken it would like B-29. Yeah, yeah, But it's not. it's not a very big plane, really. It's not. I mean, considering the amount of bombs of it carries. jet fighters are about the same dimensions as a yeah. B-25. Yeah. Yeah, I was amazed by looking at, like, the difference between, I think, Doss and his friend EJ that did the, the aircraft carrier in New York, um, where they have the museum there on the USS. i trying to remember the name of the aircraft carrier. But I saw, like, in a comparison to, like, uh, a Tomcat, and I thought, you know, I was like, you think Top Gun, you don't really think it's a big plane? It's a big friggin' plane. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But it's he was just like thinking the, of... The, the, the MiG-29 is pretty good size. Yeah, it really is. You see it up close. 
Yeah, I think it's crazy looking at the swoop that the thing has on it. It's just incredibly cool and aerodynamic. It just looks really neat. I was like, you know, I always think of that Clint Eastwood movie. Was it uh, Firefox? Firefox? Yeah, when I see that plane, I'm like, yeah, the MiG-29. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that whole thing. I was huh. like, that was a great movie, though. It was very entertaining. A little cheesy at points, but I was just yeah, like... Yeah, <laughs> like, like you could see when they were taxiing the... The fake one they build on the ice. Right, the yeah. Everything was just like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, Where no, you land on the ice. Well yeah. Yeah, he's trying to give... It had the uh, vocal command system. The yeah. System, and he forgot to say it in Russian, so nothing was working. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. That, that was... But, but really, you know, two-thirds of that film is kind of an espionage film. Sneaking They're really out, Russia, yeah. It's not about, you know, the, the area yeah. of combat in the end. He played a pretty good Russian. It was con yeah. convincing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's my stupid my stupid face. Uh, that's the wrong one. Hang on. I'll show you. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah, you're up in the turret. Yeah. That's the best seat in the house, I think. It was a stupid-ass green again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great place to be. Yeah, it really Such is. We had a fun. Group. And that was actually from one of the live streams. Yeah, this is what we saw last year. And we pretty much saw some of the stuff that was there. Yeah, there's last year's backpack. Mm. <laughs> it's grown go. a lot smaller a now. Different. Yeah, it's gotten a lot different. Yeah, you so know, I might be able to... Sony cam as opposed to a GoPro. Yeah, they have, like, superior uh, audio... And so, well, the, Just the one thing that, you know, I was thinking about uh, getting a GoPro for diving, hmm. but um, it's just like super wide angle all the time, which yeah. if you're in low visibility is great right. because you're only shooting five feet away. Right. But if you want to use it elsewhere out of the water or on vacation, it's just like yeah. the, it drove me nuts that it was so wide angle all the time. Take a look into one of these. Uh, I see them like I know DOS is using a lot of them over there just for regular footage is. You can change from uh, the 15 by 4 aspect ratio, which is not wide angle, or you can go fully wide. Like right now, it's getting you as well in most of this area. But you can cut it down so that it has different settings, so you can go wide, ultra wide, or oh, that's good. standard. But yeah. superior audio, that's the only reason why. I mean, picture quality is pretty much the same, but as soon as you set your backpack down on the lens and put a nice big old dent in the lens, that's the only real kind of downside to this thing is i use it so much and this is like the third one so oh far yeah I go through them pretty quickly <laughs> it's only when i like do something stupid with them like uh one of my other friends that does it he's done they won't let you like like i would imagine like like when these fighters like you're like yeah if you can somehow slip that under your parachute maybe maybe get away with it but with him, he went to a foreign country. You can get away with a lot more over there, bungee jumping, parachuting, stuff like that, where you can slip these, mm -hmm. the, this equipment and do it live. But I guess apparently if you get above, like, 6,000 feet, you start to lose cell phone signal. That's from what I understand. Yeah. So yeah, making true. phone calls or, you know, shooting data down to the ground, things like that. It's kind of the limitation of this equipment, but not for long. With, uh, you know, all the Wi-Fi stuff going on planes because you yeah. can get through that. A lot. Most phones have Wi-Fi calling on them now, so if you yeah. have a Wi-Fi signal, you can pick up data and transmit and receive. Yeah. Well, mark my words, it's going to change. IRL streaming and, and a lot of that stuff's going to change in the next few years because of Elon, the Skylink thing, mm -hmm. or Satlink, or what is it? No, it's Starlink. Sorry. But, yeah, that's going to change. I mean, basically, you can get a signal from anywhere. Right. It doesn't have to be a cell phone tower or anything like that. launching all these small satellites. Yeah, did you see that? A bunch of them. Did you see the 60 that he just... Uh-uh. It went to launch, and you're like, okay, we're going to see some spectacular thing. You're like, yeah, it's going to spin and just spit these satellites out like little cards, you know? And, like, you know, one at a time or something like that. No, they're just up there, and here's the payload, and they're like... <laughs> all 60 at once, and they're just floating away. But they put it on a... a they yawed the satellite so that it was going horizontal to the, to the um, orbit of the Earth. It wasn't, you know, pointing in this have direction. Any kind of a, a propulsion system they can adjust. They have like ion. He calls them ion crypt, krypton thrusters, I guess, that are okay. electric. I think is what how they work yeah. because they, basically, it's just a really high end cell phone tower with a big solar array on it and a on an ion thruster so that it can move into different positions. But there's a great video if you look online. Uh, some uh, some Kiwi over there caught um, them.
coming over the continent one night, and there's 60 satellites in this video, like, I don't know, 500,000 feet apart, just in this line. It looks like this string of pearls going across the sky. It was the craziest looking thing ever. Uh, yeah. I'm a nerd. I can get yeah, off subject. Yeah, we all are. But. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're here. So the only other thing that's probably new since you were here last is the ejection seat and canopy for our T-33 oh, wow. trainer are over there. They've been there right. for years. Yeah. But we have the carcass over here. We're starting to do some, uh, we're starting to restore it. So this is the front section of the T-33 jet. So oh, wow. Down, all the rivets removed. Um, we've got it on this rotisserie so we can... Yeah, wow, well, that's through. quite the piece of... And then we've got there. a tail section and a hanger. Uh, it's, it's quite the jig. That's <laughs> going to be the engine that goes in it. That's wow. been, um, uh, designed in the 40s by Rolls-Royce. Oh, yeah. Check that, that out, guys. The primary jet engine for most aircraft coming out of World War II, the initial jets, hmm. use this engine, including the MiG-15 and 17 in Russia, use this engine. Wow. And, um, and this is what this year, like your part of your turbo pump and yeah. So it's um, it's uh, I always get this wrong. It's a reciprocal blah 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 blah. <laughs> but this is your this is sucks the air in and pressurizes right. each individual chamber. Compressor. So yeah. it's not like a modern engine, which is a pass through. All right. Uh, so each one of these chambers, they almost work like cylinders on a radial engine, except you don't have. Anything right, yeah, in fuel being dumped in there. But a controlled explosion, right. which then creates the thrust. Wow. That's crazy. So I wonder what that... That's curious. I'll have to look that up. I'm curious to see what it sounds like. Right here. Yeah, centrifugal compressor. Centrifugal. <laughs> Is that a real word? I don't and know. Those are all the planes it was used in. Oh, the Hawker Seahawk. The British Seahawk, developed yeah. it in World War II, and it was never... Um, really deployed in combat. The Russians bought 25 at the end of the war and, and uh, reverse engineered them, put them in their two MiGs. Wow. Which ended up fighting in Korea. So. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, it kind of got almost like the s snowbird coloring on it, huh? Yeah, this is actually uh, of the era of the... Uh, Oh, when they... Thunderbirds. Oh, okay, so when they... So the, the one, oh, I didn't... The yeah, Thunderbirds. version of this is the F-80 Shooting Star, which was the very right. first uh, jet fighter for the Air Force. Gotcha. The F-9F Panther, built by Grumman, was the first... It was after our Bearcat, which is an F-8. Mm. It was their next plane, and it was their first jet, and it became the Navy's first carrier jet. Okay. And that was used prominently in Korea. Right. Not particularly fast. They were all subsonic. But uh, they were jets, and, and uh, the thing about a jet engine is it's uh, the maintenance on it is a, is less frequent mm. and a little simpler. I bet. Um, and it did add less some moving speed, parts. Yeah. But the Panther probably pushed 600 miles an hour. Wow. But uh, that's still subsonic though. Oh yeah. 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 yeah Jaeger hadn't broken the sound yeah. barrier. Oh, that's right. Yeah, not until yeah. what 1956, 56. Something like that. And seven, yeah, I think, somewhere in there. Yeah. I should Another good movie, The Right Stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah, I saw Grumpy as I pulled up here, and they're sitting in the back. What do you guys think? You guys are awfully quiet. <laughs> Kirk nerding out. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You want to uh, shoot some interiors? At yeah, the sure. I got you guys on text to speech if you guys want to. Yeah, ask questions. Ask away. Hey, what a beautiful day, huh? Gorgeous. Yeah, so if you guys remember last year, this is this is the bad boy we went up in last year. It's pretty amazing. I think this year, though, I, I was uh, trying to think of like the last year. I kind of got, it was uh, three passengers, Terry, Terry, and Mary. Huh. It was really bizarre, but we all sat in the back, and then there was um, a guy in the front, obviously, he, he pulled the right card. Uh, apparently, his uh, one of his family members had actually died in one of these. Wow. Um, 
during some battle. I don't remember the details. I'd probably watch the video and stuff like that. Because I'd have been like, if come back, do it this year, do it again, but do it in the front this time. So I've seen some video of stuff like um, passes like low to the low to the runway from the front of the dome, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow, <laughs> that looks amazing. That would be crazy to see that. That's not yours, obviously. No, Is that a that's private? a global six thousand. Yeah. Um, uh, he's at the end of the hangar, and then the the biz jet that just landed is a is a uh, Gulf 4 it's going to be pulling in here and parking in the hangar oh, wow. closest to us yeah. so those are someone's got some money cars. right <laughs> yeah, that, that one is uh, basically on call for for a, co- a company uh, and this uh, uh, business you know maintains mm-hmm. the plane provides the pilots the what are these? Through, all, that. all the parked maxes or those what those are six parked maxes each one is a different airline Two of them are uh, Chinese airlines. Really? Are they on? They're on being held right now at this point. Yeah, they, they can't deliver them until the FAA signs off. These are all because of all that ready for delivery. That crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, because of the, the, the uh, sensor issue. Right. And uh, so they're they're basically there is no place left in Western Washington to park seven three seven Maxes anymore. So they're flying them oh, man, all over the country. That's crazy. And parking them. That's yeah. Well, producing yeah. 52 a month. So to go from what? you can't deliver and they keep producing 52 a month, what are you going to do with wow. all these aircraft? And as you can see, they're, they take up a lot of space. They do. They're yeah, there goes points. the uh, oh, wow. 47 Thunderbolt. Are they doing That's some? from uh, uh, Flying Heritage. Oh, what's he doing today? What's that? Mm-hmm. Have not, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Go we're ahead. Just, we're going to run in real quick. No, take your time. Yeah, I've been in there already. <laughs> oh, what are they doing today? They're just flying them. I think they're. Oh, they're, have fun! Uh, you know, the pilots have to fly every couple of months to stay current. Right, keep they, their hours got, up. Like I say, they got their big air show coming up in about six weeks. Yeah, well, I'll definitely be here for sure. That's a great show. Yeah, so they'll fly. They'll fly. They'll, they almost always fly their zero. They fly their two German fighters. They fly right. the Mustang, the Spitfire, the Thunderbolt. And then usually they fly their B-25. Right. Last year we flew our B-25 and their B-25 in formation, which was just really Yeah, I think I got some video of that too. Oh, God, yeah. That I managed awesome. to I managed to get up a hold of a guy that uh, had footage from the ground I was, uh, uh, on the flyby on the flight that I went on. Mm-hmm. And they got a message in with the video. So the oh. plane's coming by and nice. did a nice little bank. And then it cuts back to me and they're going, yay, like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, unfortunately, like my 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 dad, he uh, um, well my my stepdad, uh, he he f- flew back in World War II, um, or was it Korea? It had to be. It wouldn't have been World War II. It'd be too damn old. well. I just remember some of the stories of him 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 tell me he was on this aircraft carrier with uh, his friend Jerry Muncie, which is like this avid guy um, that dealed with Atlas fan lines back in the day in the eighties. And some of the stories that they told me about some of the aircraft and stuff like that they had on the on the plane. That, I mean, stories now that it, you hear about later, a lot of that makes sense. A lot of the top secret stuff that they were talking about, they would tell their family. I'm like, you're not supposed to tell people this stuff. But some of the stories that I've heard about some of this, all this stuff that comes together, I've actually come and experienced some of that stuff, even though they're long gone. And you know, God bless their hearts, but. Some of the stuff that they told me, I was like, you really should be telling a kid this stuff. Yeah. But some of the stories are just crazy. Like, I talked to a, I talked to another gentleman over here. I think it was one of the pilots of the P-51 over there. And how... And I watched a documentary about how, the, how they fly and how they're, like, basically, like, flying a, ha- a damn hockey puck. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing, they're all over the very sensitive plane to fly, mm-hmm. apparently. There you guys go. Check that out. Is that the Mustang in the back? Yep. That's uh, Allison, right? Uh, Merlin. Merlin. Oh, really? So that would be the V-12 Merlin, and then the, uh, the Thunderbolt as the um, R-2800. Same as Bearcat, 18-cylinder radio. Wow. So one's air-cooled, one's liquid-cooled, one's in-line, one's uh, radio. I guess mm. for lack of a better description. That's complete. I got, I got a strange question. I noticed when I went when I was up on the flight on this, 
This thing leaks like a sieve. Well, is there air a point? And everything? Well, oil, like I remember seeing oh, yeah. like going yeah. down the wing, the back oh, yeah. of the wing yeah. and everything. Is that oh, yeah. just normal? That's pretty normal. We've been working on these engines. We're, we're, um, we're, uh, we have some rebuilt engines we're going to bring in and replace these with because they're, they're, they they're getting close to end, hours, end, yeah. of, end of life in terms of their current configuration. But wow. we spend a lot of time maintaining them. And, uh, yeah, they do leak oil. That's typical of a, of a radial. If they leak too much oil, then it's a matter of just tearing the thing apart and figuring out right. what's going on. It doesn't... Seals it, that are 50 years old. It doesn't really mean <laughs> it's unsafe to use or fly. No, it I just was, means you're was spending just... more on, oh, money in oil. <laughs> right. The sumps in these are 50 gallons per, per engine. That's right. how much oil. How, much, how often do you have to fill something like that up? Every couple of flights? Well, we so? check it every flight. Um, one engine was burning uh, two gallons an hour, and the <laughs> other was burning one gallon an hour. Wow. So I think we've got them both down to about a gallon. But they're going to Sounds burn like oil. my Audi. That's, just the way it's made. <laughs> yeah. That's what I noticed about, like... German engineering. I don't know what it is with those Audis, man. They just bleed. You're just like, ah, it's normal. You know, you just put another quart in and call it good. But it's something that, uh, of this age, you know. Well, just like myself, you know, you got to keep it, got to keep it lubricated. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, years ago, I bought a uh, Mazda RX-7 rotary engine, mm. and those are oh, des- yeah, those yeah. are designed to use oil. Oh yeah, yeah. Because every time the rotor turns, you 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 compress the gas. You fire the gas, then it turns again. You insert oil, then it turns. The oil burns. So uh, the one thing the, the salesman really made sure I understood. He said, "You religiously need to check your oil every thousand miles." Yeah, because oh yeah. These engines will go 250,000 yeah. miles. Well, like 10,000 RPM or whatever those things yeah. will crank out. Well, just... and he basically said people just don't check the oil and they run them out of oil and it ruins oh, the engine. Man. So it's I like, can't imagine. Yeah, you got to get oh. into the habit of checking the oil. Yeah. And yeah, I remember that, kids. She wasn't bad, but he was right. I had to add a quart of oil about every 1500 2000 miles. Oh wow. Miles. Yeah. 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 So anyway. Very cool. Yeah, well, I have to plan and decide what we're going to do this year because it would uh, be fun. I want to try to get a little little more involved this year. Last year was more like, this is a scared little boy in the back going, <laughs> it, going, okay, well, this is fun, you know. I'm going up on this plane tomorrow, and it's, like, older than I am. <laughs> and I don't really like flying that much, but, hey, we're going to do it anyway. And uh, I didn't regret one minute of it. So did they ever explain to you the delivery of this aircraft compared to the aircraft underneath the paint? So like Grump- 121 missions over well, Germany, Grumpy, Grumpy. Grumpy did 125, which is yeah. what that's representative of it, right? Arch. This is not Grumpy. Grumpy didn't survive the war. Right, world. it's a this, replica. Or... This was a Canadian B25. Okay. Um, yeah, I heard it was it was more of a we, something that never was never used during right, the war. We, it was yeah. a training and North American short patrol. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. So we chose to paint it to honor Grumpy. Right. And so it has the RAF markings because Grumpy was a lend lease bomber. And yeah. uh, the 125 missions, as I understand it, Grumpy's squadron was all named after the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, what is, uh, I see like second column, the last bomb in that thing it has. That is, is the big. 100th mission, so the bigger bomb to celebrate oh, the centennial. The centennial. The one black bomb is the single night mission at Flute. Wow, a night mission, really? Yeah, I had to look up more of the history on uh, behind Grumpy. That's interesting. Bombing at night, that, that must have been quite... The British bombed at night, we bombed by day. Wow. And it, 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 uh, the bombing by night did not necessarily uh, make it any safer for the British because the Germans developed night fighters and they developed ways to identify the bombers. One of the things was they developed a very sophisticated radar system for the time mm. and they had these huge Klieg lights and the planes oh, would right. fly through the lights, and at that point... Yeah, the, then you're in trouble. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, anti-aircraft? Or? The anti-aircraft fire could hit them, and then the fighters knew where they were. Right. So it was it was by no means uh, a lot safer than daylight bombing, although yeah. daylight bombing was Well, they also had what, uh, the dirigibles or whatever as well. Right, right. They had they those had hanging up so you might fly into them. Yeah, or have to fly get the cable them. and the bombs yeah. on them and all that. Yeah, this yeah, is a until, scary time. Until, boy. until the Eighth Air Force had had a viable fighter escort, which was uh, not until 1944, uh, your chance of surviving your 25 missions was one in four. Wow! So you had a 75 percent attrition rate. 
Jeez. The Marines considered anything less than 9% when they were invading all the South Sea unacceptable losses, and the Navy considered 11% the breaking wow. point. And here you had 75% loss. So Jeez. kind of think about that. It's yeah, it really does put it into this perspective. Yeah. It really does. So for you guys that have hangnails out there, stop your bitching. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. Yeah. So what do you guys think? You guys have any questions? Do you guys want to go inside and take a look around again? <laughs> We've already done that, but... Yeah, I'll just walk around the plane for them. So, in case anybody's curious, Grumpy has invasion stripes because it didn't participate in D-Day. Our Mustang has invasion stripes. It participated in D-Day. You probably, if you're seeing any of the video from the... Uh, celebrations in Europe, all of the planes you're seeing. Oh, um, right. You all have oh, DJ. Stripes, yeah. So. That's the representation, so they know that's the black and white, right? Yep. And, yeah. and it was painted on last minute as top secret. Uh, so um, no. allies could identify friend from foe more easily. Gotcha. Okay. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So if you guys don't know, if you look at right here where the bomb bay is. Mm -hmm. It basically goes all the, almost all the way to the top. Now, I know that Correct. probably during wartime, or what you guys say is the weight of it, you can't really crawl through. You can shimmy down it. But this whole bomb bay, it's huge, you guys. Look how big it is. It goes to the very top of the plane. There's just like a foot gap between the top of the fuselage and the bottom of the, or bottom or if you will, the top of the bomb bay where all the bombs would sit. And so it kind of divides the whole plane in half. So you, you get to either be in the back, climb up through here, or you can climb up through the front, which goes in the cockpit and the front gunner, and then the tail, of course. Now, did some of the some of them have a, the bubble gun in the back? Yeah, as that well? was later models. Oh, okay. Uh, the A, B, C, and D models were all pretty much the same. Uh, the A and B models flew mm. the Doolittle Raid, but the configuration was identical: a single double turret in the back and a single double turret when I say two guns mm -hmm. and then a single gun in the nose although the Doolittle Raiders removed the guns for weight uh, consideration right. uh, by the time you got to the J model you had 18 guns on it and it became more of a strafing machine than a bomber gotcha and it would attack enemy shipping in the South Pacific that's crazy I was checking my stern to make sure it's still going are you guys enjoying this? what do you, what do you guys think? what do you guys want to go up in this year? Or how, you, which plane do you want to send me up in this year? <laughs> Just to say, maybe we should get one of you guys to come and do this. That'd be probably the really uh, righteous thing to do. I don't mean about just being our whole crew of people this time. Oh, what the hell. It's only money, right? That's right. <laughs> Helps support the restoration. Amazing. All right. Well, Tom, I appreciate your time. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. We'll probably see you again. I'm yeah. sure. Maybe I'll uh, I'll talk it over with the with the guys here and see what we want to do this time this year. Cause yeah, I want to try to do a little bit more informational. Last year was more of a fun thing. This year, I think I want it to be a little bit more, uh, you know, giving a little more knowledge, trying to share it out there with it. So it's kind of my um, I made it a point to like cover for more people that are either either disabled or can't get out or are just lazy. Um, to be able to share this stuff with them live, you know, and have their questions answered and really just show them, you know, what it's all about and get a lot of stories from people. You'd be yeah. surprised how much people will open up when you talk to them. Yeah. I will yeah. add one thing since we were on the grumpy subject. Mm -hmm. Come over here. Um, the Duke Little Raiders had a tradition of meeting every year. Oh, right. I think, it, yeah. Yeah, and they had this uh, display of cups. And when they oh, would okay. die, they'd invert the cup, which had their name engraved on it. Oh, wow. And uh, Doolittle set aside a late 1800s bottle of French cognac. Mm, wow. And he said, the last two of you that are alive, I want you to meet and share this. Crack the okay. share. When they got down to three, they were all in, two of the three were in pretty bad health. Oh, no. And they realized they're probably not going to come back next year. So they cracked the bottle then and shared mm, it. Wow. But the final Doolittle Raider, Dick Cole, who was... Doolittle's, Dick Cole, Doolittle's 
uh, co-pilot. Right. Um, he just passed away last month at 103. Right. I think I just saw you guys yeah. posted something on your site yeah. about that or your Facebook so, or something. So pretty remarkable lifetime. Wow. When you think about it. Yeah, I was definitely in like a, I don't know what I, I, what's the word. I mean, a romantic time back then, and you really can't fully understand it all, being my, my age that I am. But there's just something about it that you know. They just don't do this anymore. They really don't. I mean, well, you guys are kind of doing it, <laughs> but you just don't. Do, you know, thank God we're not in another war anymore. But because now it would just be vaporizing yeah, yeah. at that point. No, it was an amazing, as horrific as it was. Yeah. It was an amazing pooling a lot of, of human smart resources, people. and it yeah. really was a pretty, pretty black and white, good versus evil yeah. situation. Yep. There we well, go. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Fuck Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thanks again I you appreciate bet. it good, good times take your time enjoy yeah we'll probably just uh, I don't know these guys have been awfully quiet I haven't had that many viewers because they didn't we didn't even know we were really coming here today if you want to walk uh, the mezzanine and take a shot down be, yeah I'll probably do that for a thumbnail yeah just to show these guys it's always a good angle on all the other yeah things. yeah I'd be like definitely back here but, yeah yeah, so that's the quality of that camera. Good yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that is weird. You can see how uh, kind of white yeah. it is. Yeah. But, but, uh, good stuff. Yeah, yeah a little bland. Yeah. 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 Why is it yeah. It's weird. It's broken. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, the app is broken. The stream isn't. All right, take it easy. Thanks again so much. Guys, that was, that was so fun. I don't know this this time. That was really nice, Tom, to give me the time to just hang out with me and uh, kind of go over some of the planes. Look at this! Look at this! It's just crazy. Such beautiful technology. So what did I miss? <laughs> and this is all, this is a canvas aircraft, you guys. You guys even aware of this? Cable driven canvas on skeleton. Very, very amazing. Vickers, Submarine Spitfire MK. And they were running the music. Alright. You got you guys a... Get you guys a good view. And then we'll call it a day. Yeah. Someone spent some time building that over Look at that. Woo. That's very cool. Yeah, Doss is probably wondering what the hell's going on? What's he what's he streaming? Why I can't even get the whole thing in there. Is it a pano? Panoramic? Let's do this. There we go. That's a good picture. What do you guys think? Is there anything you guys want to see specifically before we go? I'm gonna make up my mind on what I want to what I want to do this year. As far as uh, are we still Q? I wonder if I came off a little. No, we're good. These are awfully quiet. 
You guys are making too much goddamn noise. Look at that photograph. Wow. Yeah, that's like right over, uh, that's right at a uh, pain. P51, two P51 Mustangs and a uh, Grumpy. Flying formation. Look at that. <laughs> God, look at that view, you guys. Is that incredible or what? an interesting view. Let's go take a look at that. You can see that some new models. So this is, I think this is a, yeah, Pan American Airway system. This is the one that's sitting over there in the UK right now, the D-Day, uh, yeah. You know, I was actually thinking about buying one of these and building one. Just, just for shits and giggles. It's cool that they have like a little model collection. Yeah, that's really well done. Douglas A1H Skyraider. This is very cool. This is the other guys. CT was talking about. Let's kind of look at the craftsmanship of this stuff. This isn't crazy. All right, guys. I always wanted to get one of their hats. What do you guys think? Those are the hats. What do you guys say? Alright, so here we go again, you guys. These two are probably given. It's four ninety five a seat. So the the beaver I think they're going to loops. You guys think? Mm 